This is nothing but that sports talk. Will you have the game? And welcome to nothing but that sports talk. Our free clue is on alongside Jenna from the Mixed Tag Show. Welcome along. Hi. Yeah, I know you had a very good time watching WrestleMania this past weekend. But before we get into that, let's talk about why you got into wrestling in the first place from a fan perspective. Um, It was just... I don't, I can't really tell you. It was just something like when I was seven years old, I think I just turned, just flipped the channel and then I just saw these guys like throwing each other and it just was just like, what's this? And I think in, in, during the 90s, that was just kind of like that thing, just, you know, extreme stuff going on. So, and then every, everyone in school was talking about wrestling. So I was just like, it's, it, it stuck. And then here I am, what, almost, about 20 or some odd years later so wow i guess yeah. that summers everything up now growing up what are some of your top favorite wrestlers of all time starting with the women's division um from the women's division i i want to it would be lita lita was definitely a top for me china um trish Jacqueline, Jazz, like the, those were some of the top women that I enjoyed growing up back in the day. Cause when, like I said, I was, grew up in the nineties. So that was like the attitude era. So those are the type of women that we saw um, around that time. Uh, yeah. But my all my all time favorite, 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 favorite wrestler was The Rock. He, that was the one that got me into, into wrestling. That was it for me, The Rock. Well, The Rock pretty much got everybody into wrestling, right? You're using them in video games or you watch his li matches live. Like, 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 The Rock is literally our childhood, especially when he managed to win matches against guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker. No way, I don't think he won Undertaker. But yeah, he also managed to win an I Quit match against Big Foley back when he was Mankind. Yep, that was a, that was an awesome, awesome feud when it, um, The Rock and Mankind. And it was vicious, that I Quit match. I, I, I won't ever forget that. <laughs> and we'll also never forget his last run as a heel where he finally defeated Stone Cold but got rocked by Goldberg. <laughs> yes, yes. So it was like, I was like, finally, he won the third, the third WrestleMania match between Stone Cold, but he, Goldberg definitely made him look very, very weak. So yeah. he can't win, he can't win them all. Yeah, you really can't win them all, especially in WrestleMania 29 against John Cena, the guy you defeated WrestleMania the year before, and what was your first WrestleMania match in seven years at the time? The guy literally... I went, to, I went there, so needless to say, I was not the happy camper when he lost to Cena at, on, at 29. Well, predictable, predictability is all you can say, but why don't we talk about like some of the wrestling events that you attended during your time as a WWE fan? Um, so I started attending wrestling shows pretty late because, again, growing up in the 90s, it was just like, it's very hardcore. And I'm a, a, a girl at the time, obviously, growing up, not a woman um, yet. But it was just like, and my mom was like, she, she didn't feel like little girls should be watching, you know, stuff like that. And imagine even telling my mom, hey, I want to go to this show where they're, they're slamming each other or, or women are, 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 you know what I mean? being subjected in a certain way. So I couldn't tell my mom that like, hey, I want to go to the show. So my first wrestling show might have been in sometime around in 2011. So I've been to countless of Raw episodes, uh, Raw shows, um, a lot of pay-per-views. I think my first pay-per-view I think I went to was uh, TLC. Um, and when, when Barclay Center actually had first- That was my first pay-per-view as well. What that you... was my first pay-per-view. So I, I went to that. Time. Yeah, I was 21 at the time. That was the year where John Cena and Dolph Ziggler fought for the Money in the Bank briefcase and John Cena, John Cena lost. Oh yeah, there's also the, so the, the match where R2 retained the US title and well, Scopey Casey could not get the Intercontinental title from until Cesaro. Oh yeah, and it's also the time where the Miz turned face. What do you know? Yeah, so she made the debut that get that match. That was just so intense. Yeah, yeah it sucks that right back Daniel Bryan, right back Daniel Bryan, and, and lost that match against the against the Shield. But you know what? It was for the best because that was Roman Dean Ambrose, who's now at AEW, and Seth Rollins debuted, and they really threw it down that night. Yep, exactly. 
I, I, the Survivor Series with The Rock and, and Cena tagging up, was that before that TLC? Was 2011. So then my, so then let me, so then I have to take that back. My first pay-per-view was Survivor Series and I got to see The Rock for the first time ever and I'm at Madison Square Garden and I'll never forget the, the arena shook when, or like like the, the top was blown off when The Rock came out when his music hit. So I've definitely been to quite a few shows and I, I love every every moment of it. Love it. Love the stuff. Wow. The Rock really took over. You know, I always always saved that match at Survivor Series 2011 when, he, when they defeated the, the Awesome Truth. The Rock basically owned that night. Not only did he defeat the Awesome Truth, but he pretty much gave you a little preview of what he did to see that at WrestleMania 28. What he, I loved it. Loved every second of it. And that, and that was the last time that WWE did a show at Madison Square Garden until 2019. Right. Did it. And yeah, I know, I know you've been to countless wrestling shows since then. I remember watching The Rock for the first time. We, we, we literally had a promo with Rusev in 2014. Yep. When he was in Barclays Center. Yep. Yep. I missed that one. And I, I regret it because obviously The Rock came, came back. So... You know, it's you know, go to every show you can because you never know when something's gonna happen. You never know, especially when it's in New York. It's always just like they always want to do something really, really big for New York. So you just you really never know. Yeah, especially whether it's Raw or SmackDown, which is well, I went to my first SmackDown in 2017. But the NXTs, I went to my first one also in 2017. But yeah, that was just exactly. We I met a lot of people through wrestling during those times, and that's all you can really say. Yeah. But let's talk about why you came up with the Mixed Tag Team Show. The Mixed Tag Show. Um, honestly, I someone I used to be a banker for Chase, and a lot of people used to tell me I have a voice for, like, radio or something. And I had gotten really, really passionate about wrestling around, like, like wanting to voice my opinion around 2017. And... I was like, you know what, maybe I'll do a podcast. But then I realized maybe I, sh I shouldn't do it by myself. You know, maybe it'd be better to have, like, do it with someone else. Like, I have a co-host because you have that banter. And whatever. I kind of, the idea was there. I started planning it out, but I never really went through with it. And then randomly, my current co-host, shout out to Blue, um, he DM'd me. And I don't know what made me look at my DM because, you know, when... I wasn't following him and I don't really look at different DMs like that. And he just started talking to me about basketball, about the war. It was on Christmas. It was um, the Warriors versus the Cavaliers. And I'm a big Warriors fan. So he just started talking to me about that. And that's what I guess brought me in. And he came across my page because I'm a big Sasha Banks fan. And he saw my picture on her story when she posts her fans in her merchandise. So he thought, Oh, well, this girl's probably from New York or New Jersey. And sure enough, I'm from New York. And we just started talking. And that's when he told me about um, he was interested in doing a wrestling podcast with a woman because it's not, again, not that much representation when it comes to women, let alone women of color and, and just people of color in general, right? So at first I was skeptical because, you know, whatever, I didn't know this guy. But he started showing me his credentials in the sense of like he used to work with Hot 97 and, and this is the editing that he does. I was like, oh, okay, this guy's legit. Um, because I remember he showed me a specific clip with him and Peter Rosenberg. And I was like, oh, okay, so this guy may potentially have some connections. It would make it easier for me. And then we got into a really heated argument on who started the attitude error. And from then on, we met. You know, bumped heads over the over the over the course of time or whatever, but here we are three three years later with a wrestling podcast. Wow, now this is what happens. And the funny thing is, Krista P works for Hot ninety seven. When well, I met her way before she got the job on ninety seven, but yeah, that that is just amazing. You see what happens when you learn how to take a chance at working with the people that you never met a day in your life. And you see what happens when you take a chance of being interviewed by somebody like me. Well, <laughs> yeah, you, for sure. It's in media, rather it's in podcasting, or when you go to school. Like, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about where you go to school and why you went to school there? Oh, uh, for uh, for college? Yeah. Um, I I graduated from Baruch College. Um, I majored in 
corporate communication. Um, I, I, the reason why I chose Baruch because I never, I was, I was the type of person, I'm a New Yorker through and through. So I always wanted to stay home. A lot of my friends decided to travel or, or go out of state for school. I wanted to stay close to home. Um, and Baruch was, is a, is known for a, to being a really, really good business school. So I always wanted to major in business, but I realized I'm not, I am the worst when it comes to math. Like I hate math. And that's what, you know, if you take a business course, that's what it entails, like finance and uh, pre-calculus and, you know, microeconomics and all this different accounting, all these different things that I just struggled in. So I wound up switching my major to corporate communication, which wound up being, making sense because, you know, it, it, a lot of the courses I took was advertising or marketing and again, communication. And if you fast forward to what I'm doing right now, that essentially it, it plays a role in, you know, what I do. So it, everything worked out for a reason, but that's where um, I went to school at. Wow, amazing. And look where you are right now. You managed to put together your own show. You know, you could have easily studied that when you were going to school, let's be honest. But <laughs> Probably, who knows? But you know, life happens the way it does for a reason. So I'm just very grateful and fortunate it, play, it played out that way. Yeah, but let's talk about some of the special guests you had on your show on the past few years, ever since you started it. Like, what are some of your favorite episodes you had so far? Um, I will be honest with you. We've 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 had a few people, not like as much as we would like, but that's the plan going moving forward this year. But um, we've had our truth on the show. We recently had ja uh, the legend Jazz on our show. Um. We had JD, um, J, um, Dean from JD Williams from NXT, the one that does the remixes, the mm -hmm. the NXT um, entrance music for the stars and stuff like that, or does like the his own rap uh, remixes to them. Um, in regards to favorite episodes, my this honestly this past one that we did was really 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 dope because I got to explain my experience at WrestleMania and what it meant to me in regards to seeing Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair main event and being the first ever two women, two black women to main event, two black people to main event, you know, for a title. And that it meant a lot to me. And then I just felt that not enough, not enough platforms put over Sasha Banks. So I really I was very passionate in, in regards to what I was saying in this episode and they got a really, really good response. So, you know, I, I think that's, this is one of my favorite episodes we've done. Yeah. And to touch up on the women's division real quick, it really grew up a lot ever since they started put, putting women in steel cage matches, war rumble matches, what the hell was this in the attitude era? But exactly. Yeah. Before I'm not to cut you off is Josiah Williams. I'm sorry because his, his, his at name is that. So I was just saying that, but Josiah Williams, that he works with NXT and he, 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 like I said, does the rap remixes to a lot of uh, superstars entrance music. So he was on the show not too long, um, a couple of years ago. So that was another um, fun episode that we did. So sorry, just wanted to get that straight. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, on a serious note though, get back to the women's division. Yeah, it really evolved a lot, especially when, when you put women like, like, like Oscar, Sasha Banks, Bailey, ever since they came up, you see some tense matches, especially in 2015 NXT Takeover Brooklyn, where, where it was Sasha Banks and Bailey the first well, not really the first time, but it was the time where, where Bailey won her first women's title off of Sasha Banks. That was just so incredible. And then they had the Iron Man match at later NXT event as well. And like, killed it again, yeah. Yeah. And then they brought back the rivalry in MT Arena matches, which well which I'll get into in a minute. With only this time with Sasha Banks being the face and Bailey being the heel. Ding dong, hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that is a rivalry right there if you ever heard of any. But like, watching WWE the past year up until you went to WrestleMania last season, what was it like for you watching wrestling in empty arenas to having performance center talent as fans to the virtual fans of the Thunderdome? 
I got used to it. I just, I, I was, I think I was one of the few people that were very, was very open minded to the fact that they, you know, because this is what the situation we're in right now. Um, a lot of people, I, I remember like not being a fan of it, but I, I, I felt like I, you had to be open minded again. You know, if you, if you enjoy wrestling, this, they're, they're, at, you know, at first I was a little concerned because I felt like because we remember when the pandemic started, it was just. If someone stood next to you, you, th you thought you may contract COVID or something like that. So I was concerned in that sense that the, the wrestlers were still performing and putting their lives on the line in that sense. But once I guess things, they kind of had a control of it and they were fit going, they were going through the motions of figuring out how they were going to do stuff. You know, I was, I was open-minded to watching it, you know, and I enjoyed it because Going back to like you mentioned, mentioned Sasha Banks and Bailey and Asuka, they, you know, you can say they were the MVPs or some of the MVPs of last year just through this pandemic era. Um, so I definitely enjoyed it and I, they carried the company. So, you know, I, I, there was no complaints on me, for me on that, on that end. Yeah, really no complaints whatsoever. And you, what do you know? When, when fans are finally able to go back to wrestling shows in, in this past week at WrestleMania, you finally get to go. What's yes. it like for you attending WrestleMania this year, unlike every other WrestleMania that you attended? Yeah, um, I think you I think you appreciate it more. Um, I mean, we always get excited for WrestleMania season. It's just, it's, it's our Super Bowl, right? It's our NBA Finals. It's our World Series. So it's just like, Again, since we haven't had it, we haven't been able to go to shows in so, so long. It was just the overwhelming feeling. And again, knowing what what we were going to witness in regards to Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Um, but that and then seeing friends I haven't seen in person for, for over a year, you know. So it was just, again, it was just all good vibes. Um, and it was just amazing, an amazing atmosphere. And I, I, there was times over the past year, I've been like, ah, you know, I may have to retire or tap out in regards to attending shows because it's expensive, it's draining. But this weekend reminded me, you know what? It's your passion. You gotta, you gotta go to the next one or whatever, you know, next big event there will be. So um, I love it. And it was super, super fun. Exactly. I always get the same feeling when I, once I go to my first wrestling show, I never want to stop attending wrestling shows, even mm -hmm. out of the dumps. You got to keep going when you can. But sit, for sure. But now that we can recap WrestleMania, I mean, you already touched up on how incredible the Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks matches when Bianca Belair got the title. So, we, so, so all I gotta say is it was epic. Watching yeah, Bianca Belair take the title from Sasha Banks. After yes. winning the World Rumble, take it out Rhea Ripley. Yeah. She literally started off 2021 on the high notes. Take yes, it over the week, WrestleMania season. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, now on to the, on the next match, Bobby Lashley defeated Drew McIntyre. Was that a surprise to you or was it? For sure. I, mean, I don't know if any, um, I posted on my story, like my reaction, I popped. Um, it was, I did not expect it. I think a lot of us expected that Drew McIntyre, they were doing this because they wanted him to have his moment in front of the fans, which I, I didn't understand what, what was the big deal about Drew McIntyre having a moment. But, um, so I was already programmed in the sense of, oh, Drew's gonna win or, um, yeah, he was gonna win. So when Bobby won, I was very, very happy because again, going back to what I said in regards to the MVPs, of the past year, um, Bobby Lashley, you know, ever since he's, he got paired up with MVP has been on a tear. So I was very, very happy. And again, it's just, you know, how you mentioned in regards to Sasha and Bianca being an epic match, which it was, I lost my voice because of that. Um, to see Bobby retain, you know, it was just, it felt like it was for the culture, you know, being a person of color, a black person, you know, seeing such black excellence going on. Um, it was definitely, it was, it started the night off right. 
Exactly. And it feels like yesterday, Kofi Kingston became the first WWE Championship, not WWE World Heavyweight Championship, but WWE Championship. No, The Rock does not count because he's Samoan. Now we get Bobby. Uh, why, why do we, I mean, The Rock is still black. Because then for that, I'm Puerto Rican. Do you say, you know, I'm not really black because I'm also Puerto Rican? He's a, he's a black man. He's a black man. I know, but people always tell, I, I, I no disrespect, but people always tell me that when you, when you talk about The Rock, people say, don't say The Rock because The Rock is Samoan. <laughs> but he's a black man. His father is a black man. Like, why, we should be selling, whoever, we should be celebrating us and not, and not singling out someone because they're half whatever. It's not his fault that his mother is Samoan and his father is black. He's still a black man. Yeah, he's accomplished. He's accomplished so much. We we shouldn't we shouldn't downplay that. Especially did we not to go take too too much time away from your show, but just you know we see what we've been we see in the past year what black people have had to endure in regards to racism and 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 this that and the third. And so why should we as um, a culture alienate someone because they're half whatever? It doesn't make sense to me. He's the first. He's the first black WWE champion. That's it doesn't change what he is. He's a black man. Just that's, he's also half Samoan. He's a Samoan man as well, and that's that's fine too. That's true. I mean, I'm, I meant from an African American perspective, but you get, I get your point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, onto the speaking of Samoa, Tamina and Natalia, they managed to win the tag team turmoil match, but couldn't get the job done against Nia Jack and Shayna Baszler in night two. What are your thoughts on that? So I was surprised. So the the women's turmoil match, the tag team turmoil match was I was sloppy, but I also felt that it, I guess because of the rain delay, it, they had to cut some time in that match. So, but I was very excited because the fans were, were very receptive to Tamina. And this is someone who's been in the business for so long, specifically with WWE, and hasn't really got her chance to shine. Like, yeah, she had a, her moment last year to feud with Bayley, which was cool for the title. But she's never really had that moment to really shine. So for them, for the in the tag team match on Sunday, that was, it caught me by surprise how, how good that was. And, I truly thought Shayna and Nia were going to drop the titles because they've held it for so long. And, you know, they were giving uh, Tamina and, and, and Natty a, a push, a really big push. So I enjoyed it. I would have liked, and then again, the crowd was behind Tamina, which was dope. Um, I would have, it would have been interesting to see if in regards to them, with them winning, but I enjoyed the match. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah, and shout out to Natalya and Tamina for going as far as they did at WrestleMania weekend. They really tore yes. it down. But even if it may take out the Riot Squad, but yeah. And also, <laughs> and also shout out to Cesaro defeating Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. His first singles match that he's ever won at WrestleMania. What are your impressions about that one? I was, again, I so I in regards to attending WrestleMania, I decided to attend just night one obviously for for obvious reasons, but night one definitely oversold, um, did a much better job than night two. So that being one of the matches with Cesaro and Seth Rollins, it was a, it was a short match, but it was, it was good because you have two really good uh, skilled wrestlers. And again, well, I was saying in regards to Tamina, the same thing can, can apply to Cesaro. You know, he's never had a mania win. He's he doesn't he's never really had his moment to shine and he got that moment and it was just a definitely a feel good feel good moment. So that was cool too. And Seth Rollins is a is a, a, a class act professional that, you know, he was made Cesaro look good. Exactly. And it's about time that Cesaro gets another major push in the WWE. And mm -hmm. Another group talent that deserves to get a major push, AJ Styles and Omos. They defeated the New Day to become tag team champions. Yes, AJ Styles is now a Grand Slam champion after that because he's held almost every current title in WWE. But yes. Omos is finally, whoa, the guy is ridiculously big. Yes. With the title. Yes. There's no reason why you shouldn't get a title in WWE since if you're going to have a size of seven foot five, the guy's a giant. Crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. His the height, 
his strength is it's it's crazy, you know. So we'll see. AJ and him remind me of uh Shawn Michaels and Diesel. Um that pairing. So you know, we'll see what's to come with it. Um but that was a decent match too and it was just I feel it was definitely just to get um AJ that Grand Slam um title to him. So, but it was cool. It was a good match. Yes. That's how it's done. And also another great match I like was Braun Strowman taking out Shane McMahon. I love that big brain play that Braun Strowman pulled off where when Shane McMahon was on the other side of the steel cage, he literally grabbed the guy's hand and then ripped the, ripped the cage off just to bring it back in. And then also when Shane McMahon was about to, about to actually escape, he literally, Braun Strowman tossed it back into the ring and won the match. Yeah, with that, um... I'm gonna be honest with you, I wasn't paying attention. I had left my seat for that one just because I wasn't interested in in that match. But and I heard it was it was you know, I heard about those different spots. Um, but I think it you know you at this point you expect Shane McMahon to have some type of big match where there's a big spot and whatever. So um yeah, that's that's my opinion. I, mean, I can't really give you much because I, I wasn't in my seat for that one. Oh, okay. But were you in your seat for Bad Bunny and Damian Priest defeating The Miz and John Morrison? <laughs> that's that's exactly why I wasn't in my. I was, I. Uh, Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon was kind of like my bathroom break. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. If I can get sit closer, um, to the ring. But um, definitely, I came back for that, and I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by Bad Bunny. Again, I mentioned that I'm also Puerto Rican too, so it was definitely a proud moment to see Damian Priest and, and, and Bad Bunny represent. And again, he surprised me. You know, I know there was reports that he moved to Orlando and has been practicing in the performance center to really hone in those skills. And man, he did, he did a fantastic job, a fantastic job. They call it his move, the Bunny Destroyer and instead of the Canadian Destroyer. Um, that movie did outside the ring. So, yeah, I I I, I love the match. I loved it. Exactly, and what and what makes WrestleMania worth watching is also the celebrities involved. And Bad Bunny, yes. even celebrity and all, managed to make sure celebrities do not lose at WrestleMania. Yeah, so we knew he was gonna win. We just didn't know how well he was gonna do, and he did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, at this point. I would love to for him to be come back at this point, and I think that's most of what WWE Universe would say the same thing too. Exactly, and to rush through the, do, do night two a little bit of WrestleMania. Shout out to Sheamus, Apollo Crews, and Rhea Ripley for becoming the new champions of their respective matches, title matches this the other night. It's, especially the one with Sheamus, where he literally kicked kicked Matt Riddle in the face when he was going for for a roof from the top rope. And of course, I did not like the way Apollo Crews won against Biggie Langston, but whatever. Shout out to those <laughs> titles. What are your impressions about that? Um, I didn't expect Rhea Ripley to win. You know, here's the thing. I didn't expect both Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair were winning. I felt it was going to be either or. I felt Sasha would have won, won her match and then Asuka would have dropped her title to Rhea, but they both won. Um, and it's cool. I, I was that was a good moment. Dope to see. I knew Oscar was going to drop her her belt sooner or later, just because of the way they've been using her. Um, the Sheamus and Riddle match, you know, that bro kick, like you mentioned, was crazy in the air. Um, but it was, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's nice to see. Sheamus is, I think, is very underrated in the sense of his career. He's had a very very quiet Hall of Fame type of career. So it's just another accomplishment under his belt. And I agree in the set with Apollo Crews and Big E. I was very confused with that match. And I had a lot of hopes for that match. But nonetheless, I'm happy for him that he was able to win at WrestleMania. Yeah, finally, right? <laughs> and also, I'd like to give a shout out for Roman Reigns for defending the sign against Edge and Daniel Bryant. I mean, it was kind of disappointing that Edge ended up winning the World Roman match just to lose at WrestleMania again. And Roman Reigns is retaining the title, but you have to remember, Daniel Bryan already had his moment to be WWE champion when he defeated Batista and Triple H in WrestleMania 30. And even though Edge hasn't been WWE champion and well, world champion in nearly 10 years, he had he already had made time 
any moments to be world champion. Right, as though they be a world heavyweight championship. Well, I mean, he's never held the universal champion, which is the title that was on the line. But of course, you're gonna keep Roman Reigns champion for another another pay per view. So, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I I was actually going for Edge. I didn't think Roman was gonna was going to win. I'm happy. I, Roman's one of my favorites, so I'm not disappointed. I just felt like. Again, to bring up the Sasha and Bianca match, a lot of I was getting a lot of people on on Twitter saying that WrestleMania is like a feel good, like at least in the past few years, it's like a feel good moment. So typically, the winners at the at the main event is, for the most part, have been faces, you know, minus a couple of other years. But um, so I was under the impression that Roman would lose too, but he. He won, you know, so, and he's a heel. So, again, it was a good match. It wasn't the best main event of, of the weekend, but um, it was a good match, and I was surprised by the winner, but the finish was I mean, was was dope, so. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And we can't forget about Kevin Owens defeating Sami Zayn at WrestleMania as well. I mean, yeah, they fought so many times ever since the Indies under different names, but you know what? I wasn't really, I mean... A lot of people were tired of that match happening so many times, but the fact that it happened in WrestleMania with Kevin Owens this time being the face, that is saying something. Yeah, you know, it, and these guys are best friends. Like you mentioned, they they fought so many times and, and are familiar with each other, whether it's in the Indies, NXT, and now on the main roster. And you you know what you're going to expect when it comes to those two. So it was, it was, it was a nice feud to, for them to do at Mania, for sure. Yeah. My only disappointment was the way they held the Fiend's return in his first WrestleMania match, his first match in a few months, when he lost to Randy Orton. Like, what was the point of bringing back the Fiend when you're just gonna have him lose to Randy Orton? Kind of disappointed. I love Randy Orton, but come on. No, I mean I agree. I, you know, it's just this is the Fiend is the same guy that kicks out of seven thousand finishers, and 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 he just got burnt you know, burned by him, by Randy not too long ago. So this is it's just, you portray The Fiend as this supernatural, superhuman type character. If, if he was going to lose to Randy, I don't think it was just, it should have been based off of one RKO. You know, it should have been a numerous of things to take him down. So, uh, but I already foresaw this uh, when The Fiend character had debuted it because I always thought, you know, it was going to be hot right now, which it was. And then eventually Vince would burn, um, bury that character, and it seems like that's the case. Now he looks, it looks stupid. Yeah, but I gotta give credit to Alexa Bliss as, as his tag team partner for literally holding it down to build up for the guy's return. But again, the way he came back was just kind of disappointing. I mean, Red Screen okay. just had how many WrestleMania moments? How many? He didn't need another one. Let's be honest. I know, and the fiend or uh, Bray Wyatt doesn't have that many. Uh, he doesn't have any wins at all at WrestleMania, so I don't know. We'll see where where this goes, but yeah, yeah. even though he did defeat John Cena in last year's WrestleMania, but whatever. Yeah. All right. Since you mentioned earlier that you're, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He does have. He did beat John Cena, so he, you know, he does have a win. But I, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. But to touch up on your NBA fan, like you mentioned earlier today in this episode that you're a wrestle, you're a, a Warriors fan. Like, what you love about the Gold State Warriors, especially for the years he won the championships against LeBron's Cavaliers? Um, so to just to let people know that I am a Warriors fan, but I'm also a, a big Knicks fan, unfortunately. Yeah. And, uh, I've been a Knicks fan since I was four years old, so that's 1994, and I've been through it all. In regards to the Warriors, I've always, see a lot of people, I have to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I have to defend myself because a lot of people feel, oh, you're just a bandwagon warrior fan. But over the years, I've, I've enjoyed them when that, the We Believe season, I've always liked uh, Jason Richardson, um, Monte Ellis. And the thing is, what, what made me, in regards to these current warriors that I really started like following them, I remember back in 2007, um, I was in a college prep program and they took us to different schools um, this, in the South. One of the schools that I, I wound up visiting was Davidson and they gave us Wildcat tickets that, because that's 
the Warriors, um, bas- I mean, not the Warriors, uh, Davidson's basketball team, the Wildcats. And I remember vividly with my best friend, we sat there and we, Steph Curry was playing and he kept missing threes. He just kept missing shots. And I remember saying specifically, number 30 sucks. And then after halftime, he, they came back and Steph didn't miss not one shot after that. I was like, oh, okay, sorry. And ever since then, I followed um, Steph. So when he came into, you know, he got drafted in, what was it, 2009 it was. And he was supposed to go to the Knicks. And then the Warriors took, took him before. I was like, I was so pissed. But I remember just watching watching them when they were coached by Mark Jackson. And, you know, you could just tell, like, this team, there's, there's, uh, there was something about this team that was, was special. And even though they had got eliminated, I forget in what round. It was in um, round against the San Antonio Spurs in 2013. Exactly. And that was the year I was like, you know what? They're, the Warriors are 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 someone are, are a team that people are going to really have to watch out for. And sure enough, that's what happened. The following year, uh, they they let go of Mark Jackson and then Steve Kerr became the coach. And again, it's funny the the correlation with the Knicks because Steve Kerr had interviewed for the Knicks job too, but he wound up ultimately going to the Warriors. And then it was just, it was from then on, I was like, wow, this team is amazing. Um, so I got on the bandwagon right before everything really, really happened. And I, I just love their heart. I love my favorite player currently is Stephen Curry. Um, I just love their passion. It's not the best season for us because obviously because of injuries and stuff like that, but you know, I have no doubt in, in mind once they have a fully, fully rested and, and healthy team, we'll be where we need to be again. Yeah, and don't count out the Warriors too. They are this even though they're not what they used to be in the 2010s, they still loaded with offensive talent. Stephen Curry had a 53 point game against the Denver Nuggets. Yes, and he passed Wilt yeah. Cha- uh, yeah. Chamberlain. That was literally you know. historic. Stephen Curry, like. I remember I was riding his coattail to win the championship in 2016. I was like, nah, ain't nobody stopping them. And they told to LeBron and the Cavaliers. But uh, it's LeBron James. Yeah, but LeBron James lost to them twice. LeBron James always has to to team up with others to, in order to win. So, you know, I, I I understand his greatness. But, you know, guys like Michael Jordan didn't have to jump from one team to, to the next to win a championship. Their greatness spoke to spoke for itself. And and yeah, there were certain pieces that came along to to help, but he didn't actually willingly go to other teams when things weren't working out. So I will say that LeBron James have not left, have stayed in Cleveland and not left to go to Miami for those four years. He he would not have had most half of those championships. He probably would not, unless the way no, he and I mean, listen- joined the Cavaliers. But then again. Yeah, I mean, listen, I get it. I understand at this point you got to do what's best for you. So I'm not knocking him. Back in 2010, I was because he was making this thing like he was. He loves playing at Madison Square Garden. So I was like, oh, maybe he's coming to the Knicks, and obviously he didn't. But I get it from a from a from a from a I guess a business perspective. You got to do what's best for you. You know, what's the best opportunity you're gonna get? So I get it. I just don't like the whole idea of constantly jumping from one team to the next and then other people get, you know, other people get dissed because of that, you know, such as Kevin Durant, you know, when clearly we see LeBron James has done it multiple times. Yeah, literally. LeBron has done that a lot. You, you, all right. You got, you, got, you got four finals appearances, two championships, Miami. He doesn't need to play for them anymore. More. He goes back to Cleveland, wins one out of the next four there, and then when he couldn't win another one in Cleveland, his contract is up. Let's just try to win one in L.A. It took him a few years, but he got done in the bubble. Now this year, LeBron is injured. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's – honestly, he's a, an amazing athlete, amazing player, one of the greatest ever. Um, so this is, again, this is not me knocking him or anything like that. And it's unfortunate he's injured. He is older, even though he's in an amazing shape and probably is better than a lot of these young kids. But, you know, father time always eventually catches up. Exactly. Even in the movies, 
Did you ever see the Space Jam trailer? It's yeah. nice. Yes. Yes. Very. I was. I was. I'm very old school. I'm nostalgic when it. So I. So I wasn't very happy when they decided to make a Space Jam two, just because. Growing up, I. I feel like everything. Not everything has to be remade. I feel like everything should, you know, sometimes classics should be left alone. And that's how I felt in regards to Space Jam. But, you know, I, when I saw, like you said, the trailer, it was it was very nice. Um, I'm, I might be interested in actually watching it. Yeah, well, this, we're only like a few months away for Space Jam to actually coming out. So it should be interesting how they, they followed up from this Michael Jordan Space Jam movie. It really should be interesting. But yeah. yeah, since you mentioned earlier that you're a Knicks fan, we got to talk about the turnaround the New York Knicks had made. Nobody expected the New York Knicks to be a playoff team this year. I had them being a playing tournament team at best. And what do you know? They're in position for a playing tournament team in the, in the season and today. But you know what? They literally, they're not elite, but they're not bad either. They they do not play around. And they've had their moments too. Even though they haven't had a buzzer beater period in nearly a decade, they've had their moments this season. Like Reggie Bullock pulling out that crazy game saving steal against the Orlando Magics. The Julius Randle having a couple of 40 point games. Oh, yeah, there's also a disappointment where they couldn't beat the Philadelphia 76ers. The referees helped them with that game. So, yeah. But, yeah. The credit yeah. goes down to the, the, the development of Julius Randle and the defensive minded coaching of Tom Thibodeau. For sure. Absolutely. Um, again, as a Knicks fan, it, they always is the running joke is always we feel like oh next we get excited for a new season and it's always the same old same old but again like you said with coach uh Thibodeau um and Julius Randle he's had an amazing obviously an all star season and then you got a couple of veterans such as uh, Derek Ro uh Derek Rose helping out in that sense and then you got you know. Um, IQ Emmanuel quickly. That's really, really exciting, and I'm really excited for his future as, as as he continues to progress. And then you have R.J. Barrett. Um, you know, it's just it's 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 exciting. The, the, what's finally going on, and we don't have bad contracts like we've had over the years. Um, you know, it's just and now now that you see and the, the East, granted, is is a weak uh, conference, so that's and probably plays into all of that. But now that you see that we have some decent talent and a, a pretty good coach, now that'll attract, you know, people that weren't, that wrote off the Knicks before, now it, it look, might be an interesting place to play in. So I'm, I'm very happy with this season. Do I expect them to go too, too far? No, but this is a, definitely a step forward in the right direction. Exactly. And in, in, in unlike past seasons where the Knicks had to rely on getting a top free agent in 2010 to get back to being a playoff team, they actually worked their way up, relying on the talent they've had from last year. Not to mention they added Obi Toppin. But to be fair... And Obi Toppin as well, yeah. Although I would like him to be... One thing about uh, uh, Tom Thibodeau, uh, his name is such a tw tongue twister, is he doesn't rely on using rookies. He likes to use veteran players. So I would like Obi Toppin and, and like Emmanuel quickly eventually some, you know, get more minutes. Specifically Obi, you know, because he's a top draft pick. He shouldn't be wasted on the bench. So, but yeah, you know, again, bright future. Yeah, Obi Toppin has pulled off some crazy plays. Even though he's not scoring much or not doing much, but, I mean, but it's only because of the injury that he had early in the year. Obi Toppin has pulled off some crazy dunks and crazy plays that made you really happy to have him on the roster. Oh yeah, there's yeah. also... He pulled off a crazy dunk to the same dunk contest, but he got robbed of that one. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So he's very, he's a very exciting young player, and I'm hoping in the next seasons to come, we can see his 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 true potential. Yeah, but to conclude this conversation with the New York Knicks, what seed do you see in finishing right now? What I'm sorry. What seed do you see the New York Knicks finishing right now? Where are we right now? Are we in like the fifth we're, seed? We're like the eighth seed. Oh, the eighth seed. So we have went as far as um, earlier, the fifth seed. I can see fifth seed because, again, going back to what I was saying before, the East is a very weak conference, right? So at any point, you can string along two, three wins in a row, and now all of a sudden, you know, you're higher. So I can definitely see as high as that. They just have to continue to obviously win more games than, than lose. That's really what the name of the game is. 
So, but I can definitely see them going higher. And I don't think that's a stretch at this point because it's such a close, close um, division or a conference. Yeah, exactly. The New York Knicks should try to go as high as the fifth seed or even the fourth seed, which is where they were at one point in the season, because you want yeah. to try to avoid Philadelphia and Brooklyn because, let's face it, the Knicks could not beat any of those teams. They did manage to get a couple wins from Milwaukee, but but that's only because the first time they played, it was early in the season. The second time, they didn't have Giannis, Chris Middleton, or Drew Holiday. So exactly. that was the only reason why they did the last time. But yeah, if, they, so they, 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 play, they want to get out, if they want to get out a, a specific round, they're going to have to move up. Yeah, the Knicks might surprise them by getting a game, get one or two games from them. But let's be honest, I can take them as a playoff team right now, but I can't take them as a championship team just yet. They got oh, a long way. To go. They have a long way. Like I Especially said, they, have, this is they have to build here to be world champion anyway. Yeah, you have to build. You definitely have to build the talent, your young talent, and then probably get like a, um, a really, really good player from the from the um, free agent from free agency. You know that can be a difference maker, and then we can then we can start talking down the line of maybe potentially there's a championship there. But you know, as a Knicks fan, you just have to continue to be patient. That's all it is when it comes to them. Yeah, but since you mentioned your Knicks fandom, what are some of your favorite Knicks games that you ever watched? You love growing up. Um, I, I remember that um, '62 game. 62 point game from Carmelo, you know, yeah. Victor was struggling at one point, and then something was just like telling him, "I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the team on my back," and I'm, and he was just feeling it. That was a, that was a good moment. Um, in the '90s, again, like that's that was my thing. I and I can't really tell you a specific game, but I just remember the rivalries, and specifically in the playoffs against like the Miami Heat or like the Indiana Pacers, and just. Watching guys like Latrell Sprewell and Allen Houston and um, Chris Childs and uh, Charlie Ward, all those guys just, you know, they just had so much heart and passion. Um, and it just, Madison Square Garden, I always remember, you always used to be jumping and rocking because of just how well we were doing in the playoffs and stuff like that. So those are just the moments that really stand out for me in regards to not a specific game, but like I said, just different moments that I remember growing up that really stood out to me, that still stand out to me. Yeah, there are a lot of moments that stood out to me. Even when the Knicks were bad back in the 2000s, there are a lot of moments that stood out to me, like David Lee's game winning tip in against the Charlotte Bobcats, or Stephon Marbury's game winning lamp against the Jazz the two nights before. Oh yeah, and there's also Eddie Curry hitting a three-pointer against the Milwaukee. Yes. A lot of people then, forget that moment. A lot and of then Lin Lin Sanity, you know, they, we had a lot of different moments throughout the year through the bad times, so. Yeah, but this is a moment that's going to help the New York Knicks make it return to the playoffs. Now it's on the matter they can hold their own against the top teams in the Eastern Conference. And, well, we are, as we already discussed, they're going to have a tough time against teams like the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets. They might get a couple games against Milwaukee, but, uh, yeah, they're not there yet. And you right. just hope that you can also avoid the Miami E too because they're, they're defending Eastern Conference champions after winning in the bubble and not to mention, well, yeah. Yeah, you know, again, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be an easy playoffs. And I, again, as a Knicks fan, I'm I'm not gonna be naive or think anything. They're gonna have a Cinderella playoff run. I understand what it is, you know, with teams like Brooklyn and and again, like you said, Milwaukee and the Seventy Sixers. Um, we have a lot a long way to go, but hey. You see the 76ers were horrible for years and look at them now, right? So I just, it's just us to continue to be patient and yeah, enjoy this playoff run. But, you know, it, it'll be exciting to see in the next few years how they, how they progress. Yes, it will. Well, that will conclude this episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk. Thank you for stopping by, Jenna. I love talking wrestling and basketball with you and I hope to talk Likewise. to you when we get like around the start of the playoffs. Likewise, that sounds like a plan. And to all the big balls out there, get your head in the game.